we are in terms of um, accepting or or being um, on the same level economically, um, otherwise, uh, because we have a society that remains indifferent to the special needs um, mm -hmm. required by a, a black kid as a result of their family um, structure, their family reality. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I can't do it. I just wanna, I just wanna run home and uh, continue on that series. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I can do. A couple more questions and then we have to leave the building by five, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, it might seem like a tangent, but since I've looked at a lot of your black men reading uh, things, and maybe it's because of my background as a journalist, but I get the feeling that you have a, a, a strong feeling about some of your models. So I just wonder if uh, some of them might be uh, people that are special to you. My models. <laughs> Is that what? Yes. Yeah. The people in the paintings. I understood you. Yeah. Uh, in the in the paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, the subway painter. I'm sorry, the subway readers. Yes. Uh, struck me, and I would I would approach each one of them um, and ask them. Sorry, to take that picture. I was mm -hmm. kind of shy about that. And I was taken by how uh, agreeable and how. Um, very pro they were on the subject um, of my then using those photos yeah. as reference to making yes. paintings. Um, and um, why a subway, I asked myself. Why, why the, uh, then it, it occurred to me that maybe it's the only place or one of the few places a person resides for that amount of time that yeah. They have nothing else to do. I can add, add to it. I mean, the portrait of Yaba, Bandingo over there, I mean, you talk about special people, yeah. and you want to hear a poet or a performer yeah. or a, a human being who's, uh, who's like a magic show in himself. Larry, I, I, I salute you. I, I don't want to, there were other people who had some questions, but I, I want to say to you and Jane and your passionate and sensitive political statements and your statements about reading, notwithstanding those statements, which were very important. I want to bring it back to your art for a second because I'm a painter too, and I want to salute the two of you in terms of bringing painting back as, as a medium, aside from words, because you're, you're very eloquent with your words, and Jane, and I know your history and your paintings your new paintings, they're so courageous. I said, Jane is crazy. I came in here, I saw the painting outside, I said, James, Jane's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> because I, what I'm trying to say is that I, I salute you for, in this world of NFTs and cartoon characters and the loss of the tradition of painting and the language of painting that I, I see, I interpret, I may be wrong <laughs> with what Jane is is doing, but I don't think so. I see how uh, both yourself and I come, uh, Larry, from the same kind of background, I think that you do, the fi figuration and those those painters, you know, who were fighting the fight, uh, and it was a nice fight against abstract expressionism. Now the fight is a lot meaner. Right. Yeah, so it was figuration against abstraction. <clears throat> but, so the language of your, of your marks, is meaningful to me. And the language of your marks, Jane, knowing the, the history of your landscape painting in particular, and seeing you put your figuration out there with all that it's open to interpretation, again, in comparison to words, your pictures mean a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We well, we have time. some time more to smooth a little bit. I just wondered if we could talk a little bit about the characters, about the other series. Okay. Yeah. Just explain. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know.
more time. Sorry, really fast. Okay, just really fast. <laughs> That's like an insight joke. <laughs> <laughs> this time. Come on. I have to tell you that I, at, at um, the Dolly birthday party and also at the, at, at the uh, Bijou Theater that I saw Larry just recite a, a Walt Whitman poem for like a half an hour completely out of memory. And I was oh, just like yeah. totally <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's amazing. Um, the characters. So, if we have a few minutes to, for everybody to sort of meet meet one another before we have to leave, yeah. Yeah. But the characters came to me over the course of like a year and a half, one at a time. There's 32 of them all in all. I've made um, sculptures, the um, of plywood out of them, and they've appeared in places like uh, Good News Cafe. Carol Peck was. Uh, she, she commandeered those that weren't sold. She, it's no discussion. It's like they're mine. Uh, but anyhow, they, they uh, each represent um, just a form that came to me in the course of that time. And after 32, no more came. I tried to, I gave my chance, self a chance to press it. And it felt like a contrivance. I, so I left it at 32. Mm -hmm. And uh, I repeat them over and over in different guises. And they're a lot of fun for me. They're very meditative. And you have them. You have uh, uh, Dolly. Dolly, you have some like three-dimensional sculptures that are placed on the stairs. Yeah, I'd like to see more. Uh, okay, that's, I, I need to, what did it say? Don't encourage him? <laughs> <laughs> and is it an alphabet? Uh, it is. A, it's, it's an alphabet which I haven't um, de designated A, B, C, D, etc. But it it strikes me as an alphabet. Looks like game pieces to me. Okay, yeah. interesting, interesting, right. interesting. interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do part of the series has cool. a three dimensional wall, a kind of relief kind of thing where you have them coming out. It, it, I, I try to describe it in my my meager and humble way, but um, you'd have to see them. But the characters, they're still ongoing and uh, are a lot of fun for me. Can you ask a question about them, too? Mm -hmm. uh, do they have feelings for you or meanings? Does each one have a different meaning, uh, separate meaning? Most definitely. Um, and without my having to think about it much, uh, based on a given circum set of circumstances or a situation or thought, uh, a character will come to mind. and. Um, for me, I have to then uh, accept that as a, um, a language in itself, which uh, speaks to me on a subconscious level. So I don't want to get too hokey, but you want to talk with it? Thank really yeah. Thanks for the question. Can you, can you do like a four or five minute poem? Okay. I'd love to. It's only because we have to. Okay. Shut down. Okay. I have to let me see which one do I choose? Four or five minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Star Splitter by, by who? The Star Splitter by Robert Frost. You know, Orion always comes up sideways, throwing a leg up over our face of the mountains. He rises up on his hands and uh, looks in on me at by candlelight with something I should have been doing by daylight, and uh, indeed after the ground is frozen, should have done before it froze. And uh, Gus throws a handful of waist sleeves at my smoking lantern chimney to make fun of my way of doing things and fun of Orion's having caught me. Does a man I'd like to ask have any rights these forces are obliged to pay respect to? So Brad McClellan, after having mixed reckless talk of heavenly stars and Huggamugga Farm and having failed at Huggamugga Farm, burnt his house down for the fire insurance and bought a telescope to answer a lifelong curiosity about our place among the infinities. I had been known to say well beforehand, what do you need with one of those blame things? Don't you get one? There's nothing more blameless in a sense of being less of a weapon in our human fight, he said. 
if I want one, I'll sell my house to buy one. Then where he moved the rocks to plow the ground and plow between the rocks he could not move. Few farms changed hands in those days. So rather than trying for years to sell and then not selling, he burned his house down for the fire insurance and bought a telescope with the proceeds. He had been heard to by several to say, the best thing we're put here for is to see, and the strongest thing we're given to see with is a telescope. Someone in every town seems to me owes it to the town to keep one. Here in Littleton, it might as well be me. <laughs> So it was no surprise when he did what he did and he burnt his house down. Mean laughter was heard about the town that day to let him know that we weren't the least imposed on. We'd see to him later, he could wait. But the first thing next morning we reflected that if we singled out everyone for his least fault, it wouldn't take any time for us to have no one to live with. Our thief who does our stealing from us, we do not deny church supper. What we miss, we simply go to him for, and he promptly returns it if uneaten, unworn out, or undisposed of. It wouldn't do to be too hard on Brad about his telescope, for being well past the age of being given his Christmas gift, he had to choose the best way he knew to see himself in one. All we said was he took a strange thing to be roguish over. Some, so he bought a lens for $600 and uh, bid me come take a look up the brass barrel, velvet black inside it, a star quaking in the other end. I recollect a night of broken clouds and Snow that melted down to ice and melted further in the wind to mud. Bradford and I had out the telescope and we spread our two legs the way we'd spread its three and pointed our thoughts the way we pointed it and standing there until the day break said some of the best things we ever said. We christened that thing the star splitter because it didn't do a thing but split a star in two or three, the way you split a globule of quicksilver in the palm of your hand with one stroke of your finger. It was a star splitter if ever there was, and it should be of some good of splitting stars, same thing to be compared to splitting wood. We looked and looked, and after all, where are we? And where do we stand between the night to night and an old man with a smoking lantern chimney. How different from the way it ever stood. Robert Frost. Mm. Thank you, Mary Morris and Jane Fleischner. Thank you.